Hey guys, this iPhone guy, and this is a reshoot of a video I did a few months ago. Uh, it was my number one viewed video, and so I'm coming back to do a 2.0 version. Uh, and it's how to clean and properly care for your iPhone or iPod Touch. Now right now I'm using a 32 gigabyte iPhone 3GS. You went out, you spent a lot of money on it. I know, you know, um, and you know it's tough because you want to be, you want to show off this phone, but you want to do it in a way that you can still keep it protected, okay? And that's perfectly understandable. And this video is going to show you how to best care for your iPhone that may already be damaged and how to prevent future damages to your iPhone or iPod Touch. Okay, so first we're going to talk about cases. Now there's tons of cases all over all the time. And uh, I mean, it really, your cases can range from a $2 eBay case like this. I mean, this is two bucks. Got this for like $2.10 with $3 shipping, five bucks, you know. Awesome, awesome price. Versus this one, that's $125. Uh, it's a collector's edition case made out of this uh, mold injected plastic. This is real carbon fiber back here. So I mean, there's a bunch of different things you can go with. And then there's a lot of medium cases. The one I was using today was this one right here, the in-case slider, which is a $35 case. And it does the job pretty well. The only problem is it does add a little bit of bulk. Now there is a lot of people that won't like these types of cases because they add tons of bulk, you know. The Switch Easy Serpent, Switch Easy Capsule Rebel. And by the way, you can get most of these cases from our sponsor, www.unlimitedcase.com. Uh, the Spec Candy Show, you can get this from them too. I mean, this is a uh, thicker case, uh, silicone center outside. I dropped this off the roof, that's why it's so scratched. Um, the Moshi Can Charity even, I mean, a, like a kind of leathery style case with its own cleaning cloth included, you know? So there's a lot, there's a very, very wide range of cases and you just kind of have to pick the one out that's for you. I can't tell you, oh, you're gonna love the in-case ladder, cause you may not. Uh, me, myself, I'm not that huge a fan. Now there are a lot of people, and this was me in the beginning, is I would have never ever on my life used a case. Cause all those ones I just showed you are pretty bulk, you know, they add quite a bit. So this is one I'm gonna recommend, the Incipio Feather. Um, this, literally, you, it's transparent. You can see through it, almost, and I mean, it's really, really flimsy. It's just a cheap piece of plastic. But, it gets the job done and it will protect your iPhone or iPod Touch. You just snap it in there and you're ready to go. I mean, it's really that simple. Now, you wouldn't want to drop this, but it will protect you from scratches and blemishes, okay? That's a good one. This one, this is the Moshi, I forget the name of it, but there it is right there. You just snap it on. Again, more for scratches. You wouldn't want to drop it. This is the Moshi Eye Glaze, but it's a decent case and gets the job done. Now, even for some people, they would go, okay, you know, the Incipio Feather just won't do. Um, it's just too big. There's also skin solutions, okay? So Bodyguards is one, Invisible Shields is one. Uh, you literally pull it out, it's this little, if you can see that, it's like a transparent film. And it's really sticky, it's really all that other stuff. It's basically like a gigantic sticker you put on your phone and it'll protect you from scratches. Once again, you drop it and you're in trouble, but it'll get the general scratch wear and tear off. Uh, again, auto skins, jello skins, music skins, they're all there. Once again, it's just a 3M sticker essentially that's been printed. You throw it on the back of your phone and you're ready to go, okay? So there's a bunch of different solutions for doing this, and there's lots of ways to go about doing it. There's no right or wrong case, it just depends on the amount of protection you want. Okay, so let's go over what's gonna scratch the easiest on your iPhone and how to take care of it. Okay, now, the front of the screen, if you have a 3G or an iPod Touch, you don't have a thing to worry about because it will not friggin' scratch. It's made out of glass, you're gonna be fine, you're gonna be ready to go, and you won't have any problems. Okay, now with the new iPhone 3GS, Apple added 
what they call an oleophobic cover over the screen, which is a little bit trickier to come by because you can scratch this material relatively easy. And there's really two main ways going about doing it. Both are screen shields, both are screen protection. Some cases come with it built in, but a lot of them don't. And so you're gonna want to get what's called a screen shield. I would recommend a higher quality one, uh, switcheasy.com. You can get the pure, uh, what else, power support. Um, SGP makes excellent screen shields, and it just really depends what you want. There's a static screen shield, which is basically a, thims, a flimsy, thin piece of plastic. You stick it on. There's a uh, there's a transparent <laughs> there's a transparent glossy side, and there's a matte adhesive side. You throw the adhesive side on, and you're ready to go, and you're all good, right? There's also these solutions, and that's the bodyguards. These are a lot more protective because they're physical, like rubber almost. They're intense. Uh, you throw it on there. I mean, there they are right there. And you throw this on, and this is thick. You know, this is heavy duty protection uh, in that regard. Now, uh, so that's one way, and that's one way I would recommend covering your screen. Okay, now for this button, the glass. This is glass, so it will scratch, but not as easy. This button, I just got a replacement three weeks ago, and already it is just chowdered, as you can see. Now, I didn't do what I normally recommend, which is to get one of these screen shields. Just get the front-facing ones, and what you'll do is take uh, this sticker right here, the little home button sticker, and you're going to throw it on the home button. Okay, so that will just protect the home button. It's just a little plastic cover, and it will prevent your home button from getting scratched. Now, a lot of you are like, whoa, dude, why do you even care so much? Well, it's not so much that I care about the scratches. They do bother me, but it's mostly because of the resale value. When a new iPhone comes out in two years and I want to upgrade, or when a new iPhone comes out next year and I want to upgrade, I want to be able to sell the current phone I have for as much money as I can get the new one unlocked, you know? And you can do this. It's really um, easy to come by if it's in good quality. So if you keep it good, you can sell it really easy and get the new ones. All right, so uh, your Chrome will also get really scratched, especially if you use these type of snap-on cases. I mean, you hear that? You snap it in physically. It'll scratch your buttons, it'll scratch a few other things like that. And uh, I mean, this Moshi, listen to this. You stick it in and you snap. Now, I mean, at first it's not going to be a problem, but eventually you're going to get enough scratches to snick up the whole side of this. So I don't usually do anything about it until I'm ready to sell it. And then when I'm ready to sell it, what it sounds crazy, but it's called brushing your chrome. And it makes this shiny chrome a really matte stainless steel kind of look. It'll give you like the refrigerator kind of look. I mean, it's this really non-shiny but it's a beautiful, beautiful silver. And what it does is, how do we do this? You're going to want to go out and get a Scotch Bright 3M pad, one of those little sponges. And what you do is you essentially abrase or scratch the crap out of the whole side of this. You're going to go, no, 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 no. But there's tutorials on how to do it. And you scratch the whole side of your phone. And when you scratch it enough, it scratches it so much that it looks like that matte kind of, you know, silvery finish. I mean, this isn't it, but it kind of looks like that silvery, non-shiny silver. And so uh, that's called brushing your chrome, and there's a bunch of tutorials on how to do that. So that's brushing your chrome, and uh, your chrome will scratch really easy. Same with your buttons and your headphone jacks. Now, with cases like the Spec Candy Shell, they try and cover them the best they can. But, I mean, if you're using the same case, then you don't really have a problem. If you're switching your cases in and out every single day to match your outfit like I do, then you're going to have problems with this, okay? So, um, it just depends. You'll scratch your buttons eventually. There's really no way you can totally prevent everything. Um, you know, you want to use your phone. You don't want to be over obsessive about it, but you do want to make sure that it's protected. So, those are the safety precautions you can take. Now, we're going to go to actually cleaning your device. So, the best way to remove fingerprints and all this other stuff, and this grime down here on the bottom, I'll show you how to remove that. Um, I don't know what it is. It could be glue or something. I'm not quite sure. But uh, what you want to do is get screen cleaner. Now, this is for Monster. It's screen cleaner. It comes, I bought this for 15 bucks with the microfiber and this bottle. And uh, I mean, there's another 
the company called iClear. They make really, really good stuff. Uh, you're going to want to go out and buy this anti-static non-alcoholic cleaner. Now make sure that it's alcohol free and that it's ammonia free. Okay, So that means absolutely no Windex, no Glass Plus, none of the household cleaners that you have laying around because they will have ammonia and they will have alcohol in them. You do not want alcohol or ammonia because you can streak and ruin the finish on the oleophobic on the iPhone 3G and you can physically take the paint off the back of your iPhone 3G if you get past the coating. Okay? So you want to be careful in that regard and uh, pick up a non-alcoholic, non-ammonia based cleaner. Now, biggest boo-boo is to just spray the device uh, right on. What you're going to want to get is a thicker microfiber. Now, there's two types of microfibers. There's thick filament microfibers and there's thin filament microfibers. Now, a physical microfiber is absolutely teeny, like you can't even see them. It's the teeniest thing. Oh, there's one right there. You see that? That's one fiber, okay? And, no, that's actually five. The tip of that is one fiber, but you can't even see that. It's not even visible. So, I mean, there's tons and tons and tons of tiny fibers that they all lace together into this little section or cluster. And then they do that a bunch of times, and it looks like a thicker look. Now, there are uh, microfibers out there that aren't laced. There's just a ton of teeny little fibers. I don't recommend those because they don't usually get any stuff off, you know. They just kind of like, eh, you know, that's okay, whatever. They don't really get the job done. Now, you're going to want to make sure your microfiber is clean. Mine is not at all. I have like wood chips and crap on them. But uh, uh, the best thing to do is just run it through the wash. Most of them are machine washable and just throw it in with a, a laundry load and you're good to go. Now, what I like to do is fold mine into quarters or to get it into a, you know, a pretty sizable piece, but one that's not too big. Take it and spray it five or six times, okay? So you can get it pretty damp, you know? Then you're going to take it and rub it against your device. You can take your phone, you can uh, wrap it in. Most people have just been like, no, well, we got to go, oh, really carefully, really. I'm not a big Nazi about that. I just take it, kind of get it all down. And, uh... You know, I use my shirt to wipe fingerprints off. I use my shirt to clean it. Everyone, I think, does. There's a few people that are like, no, never use your shirt. I don't have a problem with it. Oh, and then, by the way, you'll either open it or use the reverse side to dry it. I don't have a problem using my shirt, and I use it all the time. And uh, it's really not that big a deal for me. But uh, there is a chance that you'll scratch it. Your shirt has... Your shirt will have different materials. It won't be this special fiber that will never scratch your device. And uh, cotton, whatever, polyester, nylon, they can do different stuff to your phone. Now, there you go. It's really dusty right now because my room is really dusty. But, um, I mean, that's the general idea. Okay, you'll have a pretty good looking device. And, you know, don't be afraid to get it down. You can make it squeak, you know, whatever. You're ready to go. And just make sure you do it well. Now the next is cleaning your Apple logo. This sounds stupid, but uh, your Apple logo will uh, streak, especially if you don't dry it perfectly. So just do one spray on a certain part of your towel and just do a little circular motion and then find a dry part and immediately do a circular motion. And uh, that should clean it up pretty good for you. Alright, now mine is scratched because it's <laughs> accidentally let it slid against the cement the other day. Alright, so for cleaning the camera hole, it's been a little bit different in my experience, and this is the way I do it. You don't have to do it. But what I do is I like to slowly spray the front of my finger so it'll drip out. So you have a nice little drippage, and you just let a drop drip right off your finger. Once it goes, come on, come on, come on. Drop or a drip, and you let it drip rightly on the camera. Okay? So if you can see the camera, there's just a big gaping drop right here. You can't see because the light sucks. But there's a big, uh, big, big moisture bubble here. Now make sure not to spread this around. You keep it strictly on the camera hole. And you want to dig down into the camera hole. Physically get down in there because you'll get crap in, bling, in between because there's the chrome and then it drops a teeny, teeny bit. And then there's the actual lens. So get it good and then you can dry it really quick. And that'll get your camera hole for the most part picture perfect okay and uh, that's very important okay so you're good with that you're ready to go BAM the next part of this tutorial is to help you with cleaning out all the ports on your device 
Now what you're going to want to do is get your SIM ejector tool. Now that's provided in the original iPhone packaging behind the quick tips little tricks area. I'll show you right here. In your box right here, you pull up this lid, you open it up, and your SIM ejector tool should be right here. Now I have misplaced mine and so a unwound paper clip will substitute just fine. So you oh dear. You take a paper clip and you simply pull it open. Okay, there we go. I mean that's very that it's that simple. So first we're gonna do the actual SIM tray. What you have to do is stick it in this little tiny hole up at the top of your device and simply push down firmly. The top of the tray should pop out and for some of you that are super freaks you can turn the device off because you may not want to come in any contact with another metal object. If you're really that anal about hitting something or short circuiting something you can simply uh, use a paper a paper clip made out of paper and you can dig some rolled up paper around but it's not as effective. So you pull your SIM tray out and you should already notice all along the top of your SIM tray there will be a bunch of dirt and that's great because the SIM tray has been doing its job and it's been catching all the dirt and lint. So you can just rub with your finger, you can scrape it off with your fingernail or use your microfiber towel to get that off. Be very careful not to break this tray because it's very fragile and uh, it's, it is a part that you need to keep intact. So. Then we can set that off to the side. Now we do have this gaping hole right here. I do not recommend sticking the paper clip further than this hole right here. So you can see it right, see that hole? There's a ledge. Do not stick it lower than that white ledge, okay? Because there are uh, little con connectors and pins in there for the SIM card and you don't want to jostle those around and possibly break one. So there's just going to be dirt aligned all along here. Just take your um, paper clip and kind of saw at it. It sounds scary, but you really just rub back and forth and kind of get the basic crap off. You can even take your microfiber towel and rub if you can get a part of it in there. Kind of stick your fingernail down in there like that and rub in with the SIM tray and you'll be able to get most of the debris out. Take your SIM card, place it back in the tray and place the tray back in to the phone. Okay, we're good to go on that. Next part is the headphone jack. Now if you do this right, you're gonna get a lot of crud out. If you don't do it right, you may not get much out and that's assuming you haven't ever cleaned it. If you've cleaned it recently, you may not get that much stuff out. I cleaned it in an earlier take of this video so there's not a whole lot of this that will come out, if any. But what you do is you simply insert your headphone jack, or your, your headphone jack, this little pin, and don't be worried because you're jamming headphone jacks in here anyway, you can fill the bottom of the port, it's pretty shallow. And uh, so there you go, you take it and you put it down in. Okay. Now the best thing to do is to pull upwards or pull downwards so that the top of this pin is not, it's touching either one of the top or bottom walls. So you take this and you sweep against the bottom. You take it, you sweep against the bottom. You'll see that you will start to pull out little filaments, little fibers and all that other stuff. So once again you take it, you stick it in straight and then you bend it upwards and pull. So you're scraping the plastic inside and that will get a majority of the garbage out. Now another thing here is the vibrate switch. If you turn this on and off a lot, you're gonna have serious troubles getting this out. The most dirt comes in right here. In this little ledge and along the side. It's really pretty easy to remove. You just take your little tool, be careful, but you just saw at it for a little bit and then you can take your microfiber and kind of just do the finishing touches. Then we're going to work on the dock connector. Now as you can see there is a connection port in the middle. Be careful not to disturb this. You can go along the top for sure and if you're brave and mischievous you can bend your clip even to go along the bottom. I don't recommend it. I've only done the top and that's what I recommend doing. So you take the top here and you just dig at it. You go on the top, you kind of scrape. Scrape towards the side and then when you get to the side, this is hard, I'm sorry my fingers are fat, you're going to scrape and when you get to this side you're just going to 
kind of pull out. You're going to flick out, getting it against the wall. Now you're going to see that you'll pull a lint ball out that's that big. It's disgusting how much stuff gets down there. So you really just take it and you flick and just kind of get it out. You'll be able to do most of it and I don't recommend sticking your microfiber down in here because you'll really just put little fibers down in there and that's not that good. Okay, so then you're going to work on your screw holes and your speakers. Now if you can see that on the point of this, I just got a bunch of dirt out. That was from one of the screw holes. All you do is you just take it and you'll see the dirt. It comes off really, really easy and you just get it with your paper clip on the side. It just comes right out and uh, you're ready to go. So there's, there's some dirt right there. You just pull up and it comes right out on the paper clip. Now, don't dig around too hard here because you can uh, mess up the microphone and the speaker. Just be precautious. I mean, it's not like you have to be careful, but don't just go digging around in there. So that's about it. That's honestly how you can clean your device. Uh, it's just a matter of protection. If you protect it, if you take care of it, you're not going to have problems. Now, if you're not one to rock one of these big, huge cases, that's not a big deal. You know, just find one of these littler solutions. You can even go with these skin solutions. Uh, it's a very, very easy process. You're gonna be very happy in a year when the iPhone 3GS 4.0 comes out and uh, you want a new phone and you can't sell yours because yours is trashed. So just take good care of it, never get your phone wet, and uh, you'll be ready to go. Thank you for watching, that's Naz the iPhone Guy. Uh, please subscribe, rate, and comment. Thank you for watching and check out my other channel, This iPhone Guy. Thank you and as always, stay snazzy.